What up, it's your boy 85, aka Statman from the Me Bros Podcast. You're reporting live, first round of the golf today. We're uh, heading to the ferry, obviously. We got to go over to Hague Point, got to cross the water. What's up, fellas? Say what up to the people. What's good. What's up? What's up? Thank so, you, you. pre round interviews. Let's see what the rounds are going to be. So, Frank Frank was sabotaged. They lost his clubs. But what what do you, uh, the airline did? Hopefully, he gets back for round two. What's your, what's your projection for the round today? I'm just trying to do a little bogey. Okay. You know, if I play bogey golf, try, try to shoot 90 out here with some rental clubs? Correct. Okay. Yeah, probably. Don't ever ask Jeremy what he's going to shoot. He's always going to tell you he's going to shoot in the low 70s. He's bogey. like a five and change handicap. Uh, so, he has that ability, but every round he's going to throw that out there. Well, it's probably going to be lower than that the rest of the week. So. Okay, so your average round for the week is going to be what? 77. You know, we're going to try to play solid golf. We're going to hit a lot of fairways, a lot of greens and regulation. Try to try to not three-putt. Where they're chip land, where they're going to land. Yeah. We need to project the score, so we can compare it then. 79. 79 today, that's your average for the, rep, for the week? Yeah, it's gonna get better. If I can uh, average 83, 84, 85 for the for the weekend, I'll be happy. Okay, I'm gonna project. I think I can go lower, but I'm gonna be modest. I'm gonna go with a solid 83 today. Uh, hopefully, if I can, I can make some putts, we can get that down to the 70s. Um, and, and if I'm gonna say for the week, I'm gonna say I average an 82. I expect to at least have one of these rounds in the 70s. Front nine, me, Damon, and Frank. Let's get it. Nice little fairway finder on one. Deep mark straight down the pike on Tommy. Your boy, obviously crispy right there, right under the green hole number one. Give myself a chance for a bird, but you know, got an AirPod in because I got to listen to Sports Talk Radio. Just missed the birdie put on one, but got it there with a par, so we happy. They call me Fairway Finder right here, right down the middle. Got away with it. Frank straight down the pike on Tommy on this one. Got his legs into it. There it is. Smoke show. <laughs> and D-Mart, just like usual, puts it straight down the middle of the fairway. Wow. Nice ball, guys. Pause. Uh, but from 190 plus out, your boy is back on the green again, hole number two. Let's try to get another bird. Or well, first one. Thanks, one ninety six. So we're not gonna walk through every hole. Go to the YouTube channel to watch that. But a whole lot of boys in a whole lot of fairways. That's what we did to start this thing off. D Mark with a nice three wood here out of the rough. Nice ball. So to recap, I pretty much started off hitting every fairway and hitting every green in regulation. Not every round goes like this, but you hope you can continue it. DMR here doesn't look like he accelerates, but gets really right handsy ball, with that D. ball out of the bunker. Checks it out right at the flag. Very nice shot. Ridiculous shot from there. After a three-putt bogey on the previous hole, your boy misses his first drive of the day. Pushes it a little bit right, but it's going to happen during a round. How do you recover? That determines if you're a good golfer or not. After the miss off the tee of 235 out, par four, number one handicap, what does the boy do? From the deep rough. Be the best three way I've ever hit in my life. On the green, let's freaking go! Let's you would go. think your boy works in contracting because that's straight nice. nails. There it is. D Mart would get up hole. and down right there, getting out of the bunker. Y'all probably thought I was the CEO for Cash Money Records. Birdman! Birdman! Skipping ahead to the part three, hole number eight. Your boy with another birdie putt. Try to roll it in there. Pretty decent effort. Right here. Was able to make par. On the hole number nine where I got away with a drop kick like I'm Shawn Michaels. Got away with it. Wanted to be patient, so just a little eight iron in the hand. Layup shot to about 105 yards. Par five. Your boy with a 56 in his hand puts us to about 10 feet for a 10 foot birdie putt on nine. This is where the rounds started to go to die. So at this point, I was two over. And this was a birdie putt to get me for a 37 on the front nine. Obviously, you miss 100% of the birdie putts that you leave short. But it's not good to run it by. Since I probably should have lined it up. But I'm like, I'm hitting this in the back of the cup. And I hit it dead center. But don't hit it quite hard enough because I didn't want to run it by again. So here's the three putt that gets me to a 39 on the front. Disaster. 
So on the back nine, we switched up the grouping. So now it's not me, Damon, and Frank. It's me, Jeremy, and Scotty. Me straight down the pike on Tommy. Next, we got Jay Deasy. Easy like Sunday morning. Great ball. Some he's swinging from the wrong side. And we got Scotty. Mash straight down the fairway. As I said, the round went to die, but I still had some good balls. This ball looked like it was right at the flag stick, left it just short on the fringe, but bad momentum going from this point. JD's with a straight pull here. Obviously, terribly hit on his side, but this is what makes Jeremy special from time to time because he's in a terrible spot over here. Doesn't have much grass. Good and hits a flop shot ridiculously from that position. Makes the putt to get up and Let's down go. for a par. So, I mean, that's what he ends up doing. And me, meanwhile, on the fringe, chunk a chip, bad momentum. Just terrible momentum from that point. I end up missing the putt for a bogey. Scotty gets up and down with a par. As we skip ahead, this is what you saw a lot of. Just miss, missing spots. There's one thing for your driver to leave you. But when your putter leaves you too, you're stranded. And when somebody starts missing putts, everybody starts missing putts. And I do mean everybody. Skip ahead to hole 14. Jay Deasy, par 5, right down the pike. 85, me. Finally got the driver to start rolling. This is why I thought I was going to put something up. Nice little layup iron right here. Could not cut it off on his par five, but getting the hips turning through a little bit. JDZ right here with his approach. It leaks a little bit, but he holds on. This entire green is like a peninsula surrounded by marsh. So you got to be very careful with your approach. Here I go. I felt really good about it. Left it a little bit right. And this is where the round left. Fast forward to second shot par five on 18. Cart said I was 235 out, but the actual distance was about 210. The cart did not change it correctly, and I didn't shoot it with a rangefinder. Let that be a lesson to you guys. I absolutely clipped this ball completely. The only problem, I left it about one yard too short. It stops right above the bunker in one of the most awkward stances I could have gotten. But at least it didn't go in a bunker, but it's sitting in. Finished the round with a the double bogey move. for a back nine Why? 50. A 39 50. 89. What a disaster. Somehow still wins low round of the day. Hey, point. Defusky Island. How do we grade this? So, first and foremost, let's talk about the experience. Hey, point has a very cool, different, unique experience with taking the ferry across to the island to play the course. So, from an actual experience standpoint, the, just the uniqueness of it, I give it a 9.5 out of 10. Course conditions for Hague Point. Um, I'm gonna break this down separately when it comes down to the practice facilities. It's amazing, I give it a 9.6 out of 10. Uh, tee boxes, I still give it a solid 9.2, in good shape. Only problem, the only reason I downgraded a little bit, the grass on the tee boxes was a little high. I felt like I had to tee the ball up a little bit higher than I normally do, just because I felt like it wasn't a clean, low cut uh, tee box. Fairways, give a 9.7. They were all in great shape. They all were, were pretty true. They didn't run a ton, but I felt like they were quality from that perspective. The downgrade I would give on the course for this time, I played it before and the greens were excellent. This time I give it a 5.3. Uh, the greens were not in great great shape. Um, there was a lot of sand on them. There were a lot of patches where, uh, where they just had sand and they had painted it green. Uh, and I didn't feel like they were as consistent as other courses that we played on the trip. From a value perspective, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Why? When you're paying $220 to $230 for a round of golf, you're expecting the greens to be in really great shape, and they were not. Overall experience, I'm going to give it an 8.5. Now, when I played it before, I've given it a 9.5 or a 9.6. It's probably in the top 15 courses I've ever played, maybe top 10 when it's in its great condition. But this time, I'm going to give it an 8.5 just because of the fact that the greens were not consistent, they were not in great shape, and that affects that overall score.